Well, good morning. Welcome to Chinese Church in Christ South Valley. Um, it is so great to have you with us um, as we worship our Lord and Savior together today. Um, we want to begin our time reading through a psalm. Um, so we're going to look at Psalm 30 um, before we get into our time of singing. Um, and this is what it says. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths. You did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Let's pray together as we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you um, for this time that you are a God that we can come before and lay our burdens, uh, just our anxieties uh, at your feet. And God, just as the psalmist wrote here, we need to cry for help. And God, we know that we live in a very confused world um, where we are uncertain about our futures, at least here on this earth. But God, as we sing to you today, may we be certain about one thing, that you have turned our mourning into dancing. And that because of your great love for us, that, that we can go through these uh, just very difficult times, these confusing times, knowing, Lord, that when we sing our praises to you, when we look into your word, and when we humble ourselves at your feet, God, that we experience your nearness to us. And God, we confess that is what we need this morning. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bless this time together as we sing to you. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, 
Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal.
faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As Thou hast been, Thou forever will be. Great is Thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy All right, before we get into God's Word, just a couple quick announcements. Um, three of them are the same that we've been doing every week, so we'll go through those quickly, um, and there's one new one today. But um, as you know, we will continue to meet like we have, um, coming to you uh, streamed through YouTube and through our church website, um, because we're going to continue to observe this shelter in place um, for the time being. Uh, I think we all know that. Um, so any, uh, any gatherings during the week, uh, Bible study, fellowship times, just continue to contact your ministry leaders and they'll give you the info. Um, sometimes the info changes a little bit, so uh, just make sure you're in contact with your ministry leader. Um, we're continuing to support Loaves and Fishes. Go to loavesfishes.org um, and consider donating. Um, it's, a, it's an organization that's trying to get food to people who need it, and we wanna do our part um, in helping to uh, support this organization. Uh, just be a lamp in our community here in San Jose. Um, and so finally, because we recognize this is a uh, very uh, challenging and unique time, we want to just, uh, we want to let you know that um, we would love to assist you if you are having some kind of difficulty, whether it's financial or um, you need prayer or something like that. Um, please contact Daniel or myself or someone else that you know. So um, I know it's not always the easiest thing to ask for help. Um, but we want to uh, make ourselves available. And so knowing the craziness of our economy at this time, 
Um, if you have any needs, please let us know so we can, uh, as a church, just be able to love you and care for you in that way. All right, we're going to continue in our series in the Gospel of Luke this morning, and so let's go ahead and read our passage. Um, this is Luke chapter 12, starting in verse 35. And Jesus is saying this, Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? And the Lord answered, who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming, and he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. For everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. This is God's word. Wanted to tell you a story, uh, another childhood story of mine, um, that will kind of serve as the central image for, um, for this passage. And uh, as I tell this story, hopefully you're going to see some, uh, just some parallels to what we just read. Um, when I was in my preteen years, or maybe in my early teenage years, um, if I was home by myself, I would watch TV. No questions asked. Um, I grew up in a time where uh, the internet was uh, very scarce. We only had so many minutes that we could be online, so I didn't even dare to go use up precious internet time that we were paying for. But if everyone else, my parents and my brothers, were gone, I would use that opportunity to watch TV. If I were, try to, if I were to try to watch TV that much when everyone was home, uh, my parents would either tell me not to or to go do my homework or whatever it might be. So my system was that I would watch TV, and then as soon as I would hear the garage door open, I knew my parents were coming home. I knew a car was coming home, right? And so I would, what I would do was I didn't want them to find me watching TV when they got home. I wanted them to think I was doing something productive. And so what would I do? I would set up my homework somewhere else so then I could hear the garage door and then get there fast enough so they would come home and see, oh my gosh, my son's such a studious, like, uh, you know, young boy doing his homework, and that's what we find, found him doing when he got back. If they had just maybe like touched the TV, they could see, yeah, this thing's probably been on for a while, right? And so I would set up my homework, um, not in front of the TV, because that'd be too obvious, right? But maybe at the kitchen table or maybe in my bedroom. Um, and then as soon as I would hear the garage door, turn the TV off, run and make sure they could see that I was doing my homework, right? Um, maybe you can start to see some parallels to the words that Jesus is saying, where you're not sure when the master is coming back to the house. And we'll get into what that means. But I think we live in a time, now that we're a month into this shelter in place, and we're seeing the unique challenges that it poses on us, um, I think we're starting to, uh, not starting to, we've been asking this question for a while. How do I make sense of this time? And how do I live during this time? What adjustments do I need to make, given that this is such a different kind of just state of our world that we're in? But because of the seriousness of what we see around our world, perhaps the idea that Jesus might come back is something we've started to think about more than we've thought before. 
People have asked, are we in the end times? And I don't necessarily know the answer to that question. Um, but it's the question of when Jesus might come back and what's going on in our world is probably more real to us than it ever has been before. And so in this analogy, if I'm using my kind of childhood situation as an, as an analogy, it's like my parents were the people of authority coming home and I wanted them to at least have this, see this appearance that I was doing the right thing. But as we consider these words in Luke chapter 12, 35 to 48, I hope that we can see that waiting for Jesus to come back is more than just a matter of trying to appear like things are going well, but there's actually so much more that we can experience, but more that we need to take seriously as well. So we're going to talk about three things um, that we see in this passage, um, three encouragements that Jesus gives his disciples that hopefully we can take, uh, take to heart this morning. So we're going to see these three things. We want to stay ready. As we wait for Jesus to come back, we want to stay ready. We want to patiently obey, and we want to understand his warnings. So as we wait for the day that Jesus might come back, as we try and make sense of what's going in our world, we want to see what it means to stay ready, how we can patiently obey him, and why it's so important to understand this warning that Jesus gives. And so last week, as we looked into Romans 8, we got such an incredible reminder that given the state of our world, we are all longing for the time when we can be with Jesus. Um, if we know him, we are longing for that because we know the brokenness of our world, the sin and the brokenness in our own lives, it'll be dealt with and all of the challenges that we see when we are with him one day for eternity and in heaven, we will be with the good master. And in the midst of that, we want to stay ready, patiently obey, and Take heed to his warnings. So first, what does it mean to stay ready? We'll see this starting in verse 35. And so what Jesus is getting at here is he's saying, while, while this time of waiting is going on, you want to have some kind of plan and not just a momentary one. Because here's the thing. For me, as I was waiting for that garage door sound to go off, like, it's not like I had this, I guess it was kind of an elaborate plan, um, but I needed the garage door sound to help me get ready. And so like, I don't, I can't remember if this ever happened, but what happens if they just parked outside and then came to the door and, and I was watching TV? It probably happened. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Um, but Jesus goes into great detail about what it means to stay ready. And he starts off in verse 35 by saying, be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. He starts off with this idea of being dressed. Like, what are you wearing, right? Um, as we all... Uh, kind of adjust to the life that we're living um, in this uh, social distancing, uh, stay-at-home, shelter-in-place age. Um, all of us are now very familiar with Zoom, um, but you have probably seen some uh, just hilarious Zoom fails by now that go around the internet. And one that I saw in particular, don't watch it. I'll tell you about it because it's not super appropriate, but there's this meeting of four coworkers, three guys, uh, three men and a woman, and um, the meeting ends and so the guy, you know, you only just see from like here up. And so the meeting ends. Uh, and so he thinks he's no longer on Zoom and he stands up and he's just wearing a shirt and his underwear, right? And then the other three that are still, and all four of them are still in the room. And then the other three just start laughing. And finally the woman calls him and she says, you know, we can see you, right? As he's like standing up, like maybe 10 feet behind his, his desk and his computer in his kitchen, just standing there in his shirt and his underwear, right? And then as soon as he answers the phone and she tells him we can see you, then he just immediately runs out of the shot, right? He was exposed um, because like he wasn't ready for like, I don't know, just the appropriate use of Zoom technology or making sure he had, he had figured out every step to make sure like he wasn't going to get filmed inappropriately, right? And that's actually a really helpful image when it comes to this passage because when Jesus does come back someday, and we'll see how we know that, that, that this is what he's talking about, but when Jesus comes back, it exposes everything. That's the purpose, that's the final judgment. That's what it means when he's coming back. He's coming back to make things right, but everything will be exposed. And the question for us is, are we ready? Are we ready for that? And if you are not ready for Jesus to come back, you will be exposed. Well, we'll be exposed either way. But this is really 
challenging us to be ready. So he says, be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. Verse 36, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet. We will see that the two words that stand out the most in this entire section are the words master and the word servant. And this message then is primarily, it's meant specifically for Jesus's disciples. And we'll see that later on as Peter asks a question. But we want to start to identify the characters now. And this is how we know this is speaking to believers. Jesus is the master and the servants are the ones who serve him, the ones who follow him, right? And so what does Jesus mean by the master coming back from this wedding banquet? And as that's a theme that runs, out, runs throughout the passage, what is Jesus talking about when he says when the master comes back? And this is how we know he's got to, at least to some extent, be talking about his future coming because he's with them right now. And he's, they, there's probably just some really good advice in here to help them prepare kind of mentally for the fact that he's going to die. He'll be taken away from them. But then like, what does it mean that he's coming back? He's going to resurrect but then if you take a long view of the look of, uh, at the book of Luke, you see, especially in Luke 21, you get to see that Jesus is not trying to be shy about the fact that he's going to come back again at the very end of the time. And so he's asking his servants, are you ready? And we don't know if the disciples fully knew what this meant, but that's what he's addressing when, he said, when he's encouraging them to stay ready. In 37, he says, it will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. So that's, again, they are dressing themselves. They're staying ready. He will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. And so Jesus is trying to get his disciples to understand there will be a time that you are not necessarily ready for. You don't know when it's happening, but can you stay ready and be ready? It's a matter of importance. How do we know that this is so important? We see this in verse 39. And Jesus says this, but understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Now, quick note on this. If you're reading the ESV, you might see that um, the word master is used in two different ways in this passage. It's meant to be the master Jesus, but it's also meant to be the master of this house. And that's not quite the right translation from the original language. And so um, the verse I read is coming from the NIV. And so in 39, it's a, it, instead of the word master that might appear in the ESV, it says the owner of the house. So it's still meant to describe one of Jesus' servants that's waiting for him to come back. But if you think about a house being broken into, if you could think back to a couple weeks where I shared the story of sitting on the couch, very scared in the middle of the night with my mom looking for reassurance, it was because I was scared that our house was going to be broken into. And when we know that there's a surge in crime or there's potential that houses have been, been broken into, um, we get ready, right? We install security cameras. We come up with uh, just the right kind of security systems, making sure we remember to lock our doors because we consider it a matter of importance. And if we consider what it means when Jesus is coming back, what could be of greater importance than that? And that's how we know Jesus is trying to encourage them to get ready and to take precautions. If you knew your house had the potential risk of getting broken into, you would find a way to be ready. Why? Safety matters. You don't want to lose your possessions. All of these things that matter to us, we would take the precautions to get ready. Now, why does this matter for us right now? We'll see answers to this as we go on but this is a really critical time for us. And that's why I just find these words from Jesus so important for us, sobering reminders of the importance of staying ready. Our world's different than it's ever been. Um, I know that's definitely true for me, and I'm feeling the weight of that uh, more and more the longer that we're in this shelter in place. But hopefully, we've been talking about, hopefully this is a time where we can consider what really is important. And so do we see today, a month into shelter in place or so, with no end in sight, 
with new normals and an incredibly uncertain future as a time for us to be getting ready for Jesus coming back. At best, we're starting to get bored and we're looking for new video games or things to capture our attention. Um, But at worst, we're seeing how difficult and challenging our current world kind of looks like and what it might be going forward. And even today's circumstances are going to pale in comparison to when Jesus comes back and everything is exposed. So can we heed Jesus' words Say, how are we staying ready? In the previous section, a couple weeks back before Easter, um, when Daniel was, he, he highlighted the passage where Jesus says, fear not, little flock. And one of the several applications that we discussed in that message was, this is as important a time as any for us to be, to get right with God. Why? That's part of staying ready. That's part of being ready for when Jesus is going to come back because we don't know when that's going to be. And as crazy and as serious as our times are now, how much more will it be when he comes back to make everything right, where everything will be exposed, and when he comes to judge the world? And so we want to ask ourselves this morning, am I ready? Am I I staying ready? And our practical question then might be, well, how do we do that? And that's what we see in our second point as we move into verse 41. And this is, how do, we, how do we stay ready? We patiently obey. Part of that is accepting the instruction that Jesus gives his disciples here, starting in verse 41. And so Peter asks Jesus, as Jesus is talking about staying ready, Peter asks Jesus, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? Peter's kind of, he's doing that thing, right, where you're like, okay, this is a good message for someone else but you're not really talking to me, right? But look at what Jesus says as he's talking to the disciple that kind of speaks up the most and someone that was kind of considered to be the closest to Jesus. Jesus is saying, no, this is for you. And it's for us this morning as we consider what it means to patiently obey as we stay ready. And so in 42, Jesus answers, who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. So Jesus is saying to his disciples, I am giving you an important task. And so part of being right with God, if that was one of our applications from a couple weeks ago, part of that is being able to and being willing to ask, do I know what the master wants? Like, do I know what's important to him? What things that I've been able to see, because Jesus has been teaching about the kingdom of God, and so people would have at least some idea about the important values of the kingdom of God. Grace, acceptance, forgiveness, compassion, but also not being, um, not being self-righteous. All of these things that we've seen in the gospel of Luke up to this point. And so that's part of us asking ourselves, where am I at with God right now? There has never been a better time for us to ask that question. And, that's, and so when we are in a good relationship with God, we start to see what he wants. And we may not be a manager in the same way as Jesus is describing to his disciples, but hopefully Jesus' words to the disciples, as he is entrusting them to care for the servants, and give them their food, um, watch over them. Hopefully these are things that we can consider when we ask ourselves, what am I responsible for in my life? And do I know what God wants? Or are we trying to be our own masters? And see, us thinking that we can forge our own path, thinking that we know what's best, that we're in control, it's kind of like us saying, you know what, Jesus, when you come back, I'll figure it out then. But in this whole section that we've read so far, you get the sense that if you are waiting for Jesus to come back, there will be a surprising element of it. Why? Because he's God and we're not. And I've asked you this, I've asked you to repeat after me many times, but I'm gonna ask you again for the first time, I guess, on camera, but I would say, repeat after me, God is God and I am not. And in the midst of that, 
God is still asking us to consider, do you know what's important to me? And how does that translate to everyday life at this time? And so as for me, as someone who loves control, who loves taking matters into my own hands, who loves to try to get what I want, am I considering what God wants? And there's never been a better time to ask that question than during times where we have to really consider what's most important to us. Now, what happens when we don't consider what God wants? This is where Luke is very helpful, and he gives us an answer to that in verses 44 and 45. And as he's continuing to talk about the, just this, this call to obediently take care of his responsibility, the responsibilities that are given by the master, he says this in 44. Jesus says, truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. So what is this manager doing? He doesn't believe that the master is going to come back at that moment, right? Otherwise, he wouldn't be doing any of these things. It's the same way that I was not doing the right thing, watching TV, at least according to the laws and rules of my parents, right? And I thought, I can do this as long as they're not coming home. But the second I would hear that garage door, then I'm going back. I'm, it's a complete 180, right? And you see the same thing here in how the manager is treating those that he's been entrusted with. Otherwise, he wouldn't be mistreating them. He wouldn't be eating and drinking and being merry. We saw that last week when we were considering the seriousness of our world. We saw the different uh, Disney song approaches. I'm not going to go into it. You can watch last week's sermon because it's there on YouTube. But eating and drinking and being merry, is not, that's not it during this time, especially because this is such a unique time. I, I'm not saying we don't relax. I'm not saying we don't um, kick back and enjoy life at a momentary time. But if we are not asking ourselves the important questions right now, how do I stay ready for Jesus to come back? Then we are just like this master here. We're just like this me, this young little boy who was uh, frantically trying to get in every ounce of TV time I could only to appear like I was doing the right thing, right? And so another way we could describe what it means to patiently obey, as we see in this section, is this. Don't let the waiting get to you. Don't let this wait, see that this manager was waiting for the master to come back. And because he was waiting and, and waiting, it was like it started to change who he was and how he treated his servants and what he was doing. And we are in a very similar situation today where we are waiting for things to quote unquote go back to normal, right? Right? And where does the, ma the manager get in trouble in this passage? He gets in trouble when he starts to say, you know, my master sure is taking a long time. And it's another way of saying, can I actually trust that my master is coming back? I'm just going to live how I want to live until that point. I'll just do things my way. And we will never fully understand God's timing of things, why he waits so long for certain things to happen. But a lot of times we can see the wisdom in that when we look back. But if you patiently obey, and if this manager had been caring for the servants the way he was meant to, nothing would surprise him when the master came home. He wouldn't feel a need to defend himself. He wouldn't feel a need to clean himself up. Why? Because he was ready. He was ready for the master to come back at that moment, right? And that's the question we want to ask ourselves. Is this weight getting to us? I have certainly seen in one month of shelter in place the way that the weight has gotten to me. In times where I think, you know, I don't need to like listen to all the social distancing things, right? I can go outside more and then hopefully like calmer thinking gets the best of me um, and I can actually practice what we're trying to do as a, as a whole community, as a state, as just a people caring for the common good. But there are so many ways where I can become impatient and the waiting can start to change who I am, what I'm fixated on, what I'm hoping for. 
And if this waiting isn't going to change anytime soon, and by all accounts, it certainly seems like it doesn't, maybe we might start to sound like a broken record as we say this, but just being patient and being appreciative of what God might be doing, giving us this extended time to consider what's most important, hopefully we can see that as a blessing. And so as a little boy waiting for uh, my parents to come home, what else could I have done like instead of watching TV, right? Um, I mean, not that I didn't, chose to do anything different. Um, and it wasn't just about getting my homework done and being like the perfect student. Um, but if you think about it, there were so many other things that I could have been doing. And yet I had this plan to just, I'm going to squeeze in every ounce of TV time and, and then just, you know, snap back into like uh, the appearance of something when my parents got home. But there's so many other things I could have been doing. I could have been playing basketball in the backyard. I could have been reading. I could have been listening to music that I enjoyed. We are, there are so many other options, and yet we impatiently always wait for the one that we want. Um, the, why? Because we're used to being our own gods. We're used to being in control. And in that moment, what did I want the most? I wanted to watch TV. I wanted what felt best at that moment. And so what was this manager lacking? We said that we get ourselves in trouble when we aren't asking ourselves, what does God want? And he was lacking this understanding of what was important to the master. So why does this matter? Why does it matter that we know what's important to God, our heavenly father? We see this in the last part, right? Right? And this is where Jesus gives a really stern warning that hopefully we can take to heart this morning. And we see this starting in verse 46. It says, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. I'll stop there at 47. Why do these mornings matter? Why did I go to great lengths to have this elaborate plan, having my homework set up in another room and listening for the garage door? I didn't want the consequences. Like if, if my parents could see that I was doing my homework, everything would be fine. They could walk in and say, hi, how are you doing? What are you up to? And I could show them, see, I'm doing my homework like a good son, right? I didn't want the consequences of, I didn't even want the conversation of if they walked in and I was watching TV, it's like, well, what are you watching? How long have you been watching for? Have you done your homework yet? I mean, stuff that like normally happened in the course of our relationship. Um, and on the one hand, I could say, man, how pushy are you being mom and dad? But when we really understand the importance of what warnings are and the heart of them, like 10, 11 year old me wouldn't understand back then but hopefully you could see the intention behind their warnings and why they would have certain expectations because they were trying to help me see uh, just what was best for me in those moments. And there are consequences that Jesus lists off here. And he's saying, if you know, if you know me, if you know what I'm about, if you know what I care about, then you really gotta consider what's important. And you've got to consider the, this responsibility that I've given to you to be a light, to be compassionate the way that the Good Samaritan was a couple chapters back. To be a part of this kingdom of God that people have been observing through the miracles and healings and also through the teachings of Jesus. If you know what it's about, the worst thing that we can be doing then is just ignoring that and going on and living however we want to live. And that's certainly true today in a time unlike any that we've ever seen before. And so why do warnings really matter? They're warning us about something important. And let's understand the warning that Jesus is giving here. He's saying, if you know what the kingdom of God is about, how harsh will it be if you choose to ignore that? Now, this passage kind of stirs up all kinds of important and heavy questions for us. And some of it might be just really challenging for us to think of. We might start to go down rabbit trails of thinking, does this mean I can lose my salvation? Do, I mean, am I really doing this? And I think like reflecting on, the, on this is really meant to ask ourselves, what am I doing at this time? It's not to question our salvation. It's not to question like, do I really know him? Although that's a great question to ask. But if we know this God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, and we've experienced what life is like with him moment by moment, 
We want to be diligent. We want to stay ready. We want to patiently obey to continue to experience that moment by moment. Why? It's a matter of life and death, spiritually speaking. And the great, the, just the great hope that we have as Christians, as we talked about last week on Easter Sunday, is that though our world is broken, we know that there is hope. But in this section, what we're seeing, Jesus is saying, don't ignore that hope. And that's why we want to ask ourselves, what does it look like to stay ready and to patiently obey and to understand why it's important to consider those things? Why? Because the state of our world is so much more important merely than Animal Crossing or TikTok or our work or watching YouTube or whatever it is that we're using to pass the time. It's really about understanding the heart of God. And here's the thing, when he, when, when this, if this manager was able to care for the servants of the master as he's waiting, what I've been able to experience just in my human relationships is when I can take my eyes off of my own wants, my own desires, the, own, the things that are going to entertain me, and I can spend time caring for others, that's what the kingdom of God is all about. That's what the master was in, entrusting the manager with here in this passage. And so I hope on this morning we can consider the importance of Jesus' warnings and we could see, do I really know this good father? And is that going to change the way that I view this time, a time where we're asked to consider what's most important? And so I pray that we would understand the warnings that Jesus is giving. Um, I used to think uh, as a kid that the idea of Jesus coming back was extremely scary. I remember um, in middle school at the church I went to when I went to youth group, I remember seeing this video about the second coming and how kind of wicked and um, hopeless our world was and how we have no idea when Jesus might come back. And that really scared me half to death. And it scared me because I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for Jesus to come back. Like I was that kid that was waiting to see if the garage door was gonna open. And as time has gone on, I've had to really ask myself this question, am I ready for Jesus to come back? And if I don't, if, I, if the answer to that is no, is that because I love this world or this comfort more than I do my relationship with God? Or is it because I don't truly understand how great the God of the universe is, so great that he went to great lengths to die on a cross to have a relationship with me? And when we consider what's most important, I hope and I pray that we would consider, don't we want Jesus to come back at this moment? Would there be anything better, any earthly thing that we are seeking that we might treat as a matter of life and death isn't the best thing when we can be before our Lord and Savior and we can truly know that everything is going to be okay. It won't be about fear. We don't have to worry about being exposed because we will be exposed, but he will show that my grace covers what you've done. And if it hasn't been clear to us in this past month, we need Jesus to come back. As we saw last week, we are eagerly awaiting the redemption of this world. And part of that means being ready for the return of our Lord and Savior. And so I just want to challenge you this morning, if you don't know who the master is, and the master is speaking of Jesus Christ, if we are not just eagerly anticipating his return, we might want to consider these warnings that we see here in Luke chapter 12. When I was thinking about this story about the garage door, it showed me that um, part of why I would wait for the garage door to open was because of a fear that I had of my parents. Fear of getting in trouble, fear of the consequences, fear of being yelled at, whatever it might be. And I'm thankful that many years later, now um, because I live about you know four or five hours away from my parents, that whenever I do go to see them or they come to see me, a long journey like exists in between then, uh, like getting there and even though I wouldn't say we have the perfect relationship, there's so much more we could do to grow in the depth of our relationship that we're working on. The f 
It's not like I'm waiting for the garage door to open anymore. There's just this like, there's at least a neutrality. I mean, you'd like to think like, I'm, I'm super excited to see them. Maybe sometimes I am, maybe sometimes I'm not. But it's different than waiting in fear for that garage door to open. There's something so much more to a relationship with Jesus Christ than it is just giving off the appearance of something being right and getting by. It's to truly know him and to do his will and to see how good it is that he entrusts us with something in the meantime. That's how we'll stay ready. And that's why when he comes back, there will, we won't have to live in fear. We will be overjoyed that he has come back to make things right. And my hope and prayer for us this morning is that we would know the true Savior, the true Master, and that we would eagerly await His coming and what that means for our lives. And that that would change what shelter in place looks like. That it doesn't have to be viewed as a time that's just interminable and messing with our mental and emotional health, but that we can see, God, it is a joy for us to do what we can to be ready. And that's my prayer for us this morning, South Valley. That's what God's word is asking us to consider. Are we ready? Let's get ready because it's the best thing that we can be doing. It's the best way we're gonna truly experience his heart. So I pray that we would take take great heed to these words this morning and that we would truly know the heart of our Lord. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that you made a way for us. That as we sang earlier, that you are so incredibly faithful. And God, I just, I pray, Lord, that you would reveal more and more of your heart to us. And God, that we would see this unique time in history as a time where we can truly know your heart, know your will, and enjoy what it means to be walking moment by moment with you, even if it's differently than we've ever had to do it before. So God, I pray, would we really take these words seriously this morning? That we would sing of your goodness right now and that we would be able to live that out as we just, uh, just, God, enjoy the moment by moment of getting to know more and more of your heart. God, we pray for our world, um, people who live in fear, We know there's so much fear at this time. Um, God, we just pray that people would come to know you, the good master, the Lord who laid down his life and who is coming back again someday to make everything right. So God, we just pray that this would be a time where your world is exposed to the truth of who you are. And God, I pray that you would use us to do our part in the midst of that. So God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.
All right, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love, love that was demonstrated um, by the grace of your son, Jesus Christ, who uh, died on the cross for our sins and who we know is coming again. And so, Lord, I pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will help us stay ready and be obedient to uh, the good God that we know that you are. And so, Lord, that we might know your heart and that we might share that with others um, as we go from wherever we're at in our lives today, um, both here and both now and and onward into into the future, God. So we thank you um, for your great love for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That concludes our time together this week. We will see you again next Sunday.